Hi y'all, this is Rebecca Ricks um, with the Homeschool Connection and we're doing um, What's Your Brew? We can help you and we're going to check on, today we're going to talk about um, the um, some, some homeschool, different types of homeschooling. Um, what um, what types there are and kind of what type there are what type you are and people kind of use certain terms about homeschooling sometimes we don't really know what they're talking about and what they're um, what they're interested in so we're going to do um, homeschooling and, and different types of homeschooling um, so to start last we started it on Tuesday and then we had some technical difficulties so today we're going to go back through all that um, so first of all, the one we kind of always talk about is traditional homeschooling, and it's kind of like um, what most people um, think of when they think of school. It's very traditional. Usually the teacher's doing It's very teacher-intensive. The teacher's doing the teaching. The children are um, listening or, or um, following along in their books, a little more structured. And a lot of people like that, but some people... Um, prefer lots of other different different types. So we have traditional, and as a teacher, I really really like traditional. I am uh, I enjoy. That's what I was kind of come raised on teaching and taught, and I like that. But I think that the most important thing when we talk about this is that as a homeschooler, really you as the parent are responsible for your child's education. So you will kind of develop your own style. The more you do something, the better you get at it. Um, as, a, um, as, a, as a teacher, I kind of figure out my style goes, and as each child comes along, we, um, we kind of readjust to that too. So remember, there's no wrong way to eat a Reese's, okay? There's no wrong way to make your cup of coffee. It doesn't really matter what, um, however it goes, whatever you have. Um, a lot of people will just, um, it, you know, don't don't be stressed. Maybe you don't know. I'm not this certain type. Well, most people are kind of a mix. You know, kind of when you do those personality things, everybody, um, you can get like a million different, come out with a million different personalities. Everybody's a little different. There's a big different mixes. It's the same thing with homeschooling. You'll find out what you're comfortable with. So every family is unique. Every child is unique. So find the right method that works for you. So first, we always talk about traditional because that's usually what we'll use in school. Another one that's gotten really big lately is um, classical. And classical education really focuses on rhetoric. It focuses on lots of memory work when they're younger. Um, it focuses and then ends. Um, it kind of develops as you go through and gets harder. It's very, very... Um, language based instead of doing Spanish you would do Latin because um, it, it Latin is the base of most languages and it'll help you learn other languages as you do it um, and you know there are whole companies that do classical Veritas Press does classical writing classical reading um, lots of reading and writing my only thing and this is my little bit of trepidation as a math teacher is that um, it doesn't have very much, it's not math heavy, and I'm a math heavy person, so it needs to be, it, it needs to be a little more balanced, making sure that you're adding that math in there with it. Um, another type that we kind of talked about is, um, we didn't really get to talk about that much last time, would be Charlotte Mason. And the Charlotte Mason is the core belief that um, children are not, you know, just containers here that that we need to be filled. Um, that they that they have their own. We remember we need to remember that children. Um, everybody kind of learns different. Instead of thinking like our typical classroom where everybody fits that mold, Charlotte Mason kind of says that we're all individuals, and Charlotte Mason is a very hands-on. Montessori is kind of a spin-off. Charlotte Mason learning. Um, there's lots and lots of people who do that. Um, right Start Math is kind of a Charlotte Mason type of learning. It's a very hands-on math, learning math through games and different things. And there are people who do do that, and that is great. That works for that. Um, that works perfect for that child. But um, 
if you are not a lot of stuff, if you're a crafty person, this might really work for you. Um, so what they want to do really in Charlotte Mason, one of the big things that she always talks about in her books is resetting your mind. So they switch between an easy task and a hard task. Do something really hard and brain intensive and then do something easy and fun. Do something hard, easy. Um, and so a lot of times for science, they'll do journaling, hands-on. Um, and from Charlotte Mason, we kind of have Montessori, which is a little more structured, but with the hands-on. And then some people took Charlotte Mason and went a step further and went all the way to unschooling. And so in unschooling, we think that there is no formal curriculum. Everything is just completely unstructured. So um, they're all kind of a little bit related there. And I know people sometimes get a little bit confused between what is an unschooler, what does Charlotte Mason mean? Charlotte Mason really means hands-on. Um, switching between something that is easy and hard. Montessori means even more hands-on, but a little more structured with a structured curriculum. And then it kind of leads, some people can do a mix of both and go into unschooling, and unschooling is where there's no formal curriculum. Everything is kind of um, just done um, how, however they want. Everything is just kind of... Um, N not formalized, not done in a formal way. Um, and, and I think like unschooling can work on a certain level, but I feel like there needs to be a little bit of structure. True, true, true unschoolers, and I have met some true, true, true unschoolers who have kids that are my age who have talked about they just let their kids learn when they felt like it. Um, here's what you need to learn to get to college. Figure it out when you're ready to figure it out and let their kids just kind of figure, figure things out. And um, as, as a very structured teacher, that kind of makes me a little crazy. But again, if that's the way your child learns and you can work from it that way, then that is the way, the, the way to do it. Um, a lot of times, um, most people are a very, very um, eclectic group. Um, it's the most used by homeschoolers, really. Um, it's a little of this, a little of that. You might use a workbook for math, which is a very traditional workbook for math. And you might do um, notebooking or journaling for history because that's what you enjoy. Um, a lot of classical will do read-alouds uh, for your history, which I really enjoy. I've kind of started mixing with my history. We do history through literature, so you read you have a history book, which is structured, but then you'll have a book you're reading, either a biography or something else with it that's kind of a classical, more of a classical approach. And um, to get that intake in, maybe you'll do that for history. Maybe you'll do history, which is even more classical, is you don't really have a formal textbook. You only read or sit and listen to someone read uh, parts of classic literature to you. So let's say you're going to learn about ancient Greek. Someone would read the Iliad and the Odyssey, and your child would listen to that, and that is how they learn their history. That can kind of be a very, that's a very classical method, but you could kind of look at that as an unschooling method, too, that we're learning kind of not, not really paying um, specific um, attention to that, but learning, learning as you go. So you remember that... Um, a lot of times in the mornings, most homeschool families will do a more formal education, kind of the things that you feel like you have to do, very structured. And a have to would be maybe um, we have to get our math page done. That's a very traditional thing to do. We have to get certain things done. And then be less structured in the afternoon. Um, just remember that when it does, you're the parent, again, no wrong way to eat a Reese's. Everybody can kind of figure it out, and you'll figure out what you and your child enjoy doing, too. More and more people are leaning toward making a few things structured and then adding some extra things that are not as structured. Um, history and science, this is just my opinion. And I used to have someone that says you can't, a preacher that used to say you can't sell potatoes based on my opinion, but here's my opinion that until they get to middle school and high school, science and history should really kind of be experienced. So in our programs here, we have formal English and writing and spelling 
and reading and math. And then for history and science, I think that um, I let the parents really take care of that and do their own um, history and science. As long as you're kind of getting exposed to it, reading through it, doing different things like that, it doesn't really, um, it doesn't have to be super structured until seventh, till eighth, ninth grade when you're starting to take a structured bio biology, something really structured that you're going to need to graduate from high school, high school with. Um, and so really it needs to be what you as a parent enjoy. What type of homeschooler really depends on what type of personality you have. I need the structure, okay? As a teacher, I'm kind of go with the flow person, but as a teacher, I have to plan out my lesson plans. Like, I, I try to plan out the whole year. I know I, I get crazy on my lesson plans, and I'll have the whole year planned out because I feel like if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. But in the midst of that, too, I have to make sure that my students are learning. I can't be so stuck to the lesson plans that I'm not sure that my my students are learning too when I'm teaching. So that's just kind of some insight on the different types. We have classical, we have traditional, we have a Charlotte Mason, um, kind of Montessori, unschooling, and there's a few other, but most people really find out that they're really eclectic. They use a mix of every, a little bit of mix of everything, um, uh, uh, of different types that they have. Um, Another one that I really wanted to do is uh, Waldorf, um, and um, that's that's also where they they do a whole education. Oh, last time I talked a little bit about unit based, kind of where you do everything. Um, so, kind of that's a Waldorf is another one that's it's very very much. Um, um, educating the whole child, um, whole education, what kind of is part of Charlotte Mason or classical, whole education, and in in Waldorf, it's kind of an unschooling. It's another spinoff of it. Um, they don't use any formal textbooks. They kind of use, they create their own books and do different things like that. So that's kind of what we were we're talking about. If you want more information, we'll have some stuff on the blog today. Um, I did have somebody here ask if we're going to talk about preparing your middle schoolers for collegiate or Cambridge programs. And yes, I'll do a whole um, thing on that, how to, how to really get them ready and um, what classes and things we discuss. Maybe we'll start that for next, have that put together for next week and some good handouts um, for that or different things. So also, if you have any questions, and thank you for the idea on the topic, I'll make sure that we... Um, put that on the list, and we'll we'll talk about those things too. So um, before you go, I hope you have a great. Oh wait, I have to share my awesome mug. You see this? My my parents live in Texas. I'm from Oklahoma originally, and my mom gave me this this mug. But look, it's like ginormo. It holds like three cups of coffee. I I'm only drinking like half, but you could drink like four cups of coffee in here. So um, I know it, this makes me happy. Of course, I'm drinking decaf which makes me less happy, but it'll be okay. I'm sure I'll, I can suck it up and, and, and go on with my life. But if you have any other questions or any ideas on um, things that we'd like to do later on this summer, I do want to go through getting your students ready for the SAT and ACT since we have, um, you know, that's a big, big push too, getting ready for collegiate, what we need to get our middle schoolers ready, those type of things, we will be covering those. So please let me know. Send me a message if you have any other ideas for topics or things that you'd like to go over, www.thehomeschoolconnection.net is our website, and the blog is on there, What's Your Brew? And we hope that you'll join us um, next time for some more information on those topics. And look up, because I think we'll post it here in a little bit, what we're going to be talking about next week. So I hope you all have a good week. See you next Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock, and we'll post ahead of time what we're going to do for uh, what topic we'll be covering at that time. Hope you all have a great day.